the Lakers are in need of somebody who can be healthy and give them minutes. And that doesn't fit who Dwight Howard or Joe Kim Noah are at this point of their career. I think this is unlikely. I believe that the Lakers coaches want a younger, more active player at this point in their careers. It's crazy how they doubted Dwight being a good piece for the Lakers. Whoever thought that was extremely wrong though. He played really good in his role for them. In the regular season, he averaged seven and a half points, seven boards and one block, shooting 73% from the field, playing 18 minutes a game. And in the postseason, he averaged nearly six points and four boards, shooting 68% from the field, playing 15 minutes a game. People need to put more respect on Dwight's name. Right now for his career, he's an eight-time All-Star, made the All-NBA team eight times, and the All-Defensive team five times, is a two-time block champ, won the Defensive Player of the Year three times, and is now a one-time NBA champion. Everybody out there, don't ever give up on you. Give up on your dreams. Get fucking do it. I swear, just keep fighting. I swear to God, don't ever give up on yourself. Look at this shit, bro. At this point, I think he's definitely going to be in the Hall of Fame one day with this resume. If he stays with the Lakers, it's only going to get better too. One thing I learned from last night's uh, Laker loss to the Bucks in Milwaukee is that the Lakers, your Lakers, Chris Broussard, are championship frauds as we head into Christmas. He said this after the Bucks beat the Lakers, and we all know what happened to the Bucks in the playoffs. Milwaukee Bucks lose. The best team in the NBA is gone. And the Miami Heat going to the Eastern Conference Finals for the first time. Obviously playing in a place like this with no family, no fans, uh, it, it was tough. Uh, obviously that's not an excuse, it's tough for everybody. Uh, but uh, looking back to the bubble, obviously nobody's going to be happy. And we can't forget about everyone who thought the Clippers were going to win it all. I have a hard time picking against the Clippers. Who do you think is going to win the West this year? Um, the Clippers. Clippers, on the other hand, have a team that completely bought in last year with no superstars. You add two of the most selfless superstars in the game that go both ways. Obviously. Clippers not only have the best defensive versatility in the league, yes, the Lakers have a height advantage, but the three-point shooting of the Clippers with Lou Will and Trey. Clippers or Lakers? Clippers. Why? Clippers. I think their pieces fit together a little bit better. I was disappointed in the Clippers. I thought they were going to at least make the conference finals. Everybody that I knew wanted to see the Clippers go against the Lakers, but the Nuggets were just a better team. They had all the chances in the world when they were up 3-1, but they still couldn't get the job done. To Grant, 6-0 in elimination games here in the bubble. Much respect for the coaching staffs. First year together. Um can't even say we want to change our roster. We like what we got. Um, I mean, we've been saying it all years. Just chemistry, being together. Just got to build, build some chemistry. Uh, got to get smarter. Uh, just disappointed, you know. I thought we had so many opportunities over the last three games to win. Um, but listen, you got to give Denver credit. They kept playing. They kept executing. They kept playing together. Um, you know, so right now, just disappointment. I can't wait to see how the Lakers are going to do next season. If Anthony Davis resigns with them, I can definitely see the Lakers winning it all. Because AD said this, I think he's definitely going to end up resigning. We got 15 in. We got 15 in. But if he didn't say they were going to run it back, I still would have thought he was going to stay. It doesn't make sense to leave a team that you just won a championship with that's pretty much going to have the same team next season. Y'all know this fool. Y'all know this one fool. Y'all know this one fool. Y'all know this one fool. Y'all talk about the Greek Freak. He the first one with it. He the first one with it. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. He the first one with a ring. Yeah. And after three months, one team has emerged victorious. The Los Angeles Lakers are the NBA's 2019-20 champions. The league is going to be extremely tough with everyone back healthy, so it's not guaranteed they're going to win it all again. But what do y'all think? Can the Lakers win the chip again next season? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more vids. Peace. In the right timeline. I can't believe Jeff Van Gundy said this. If the Lakers traded LeBron, that probably would have been the dumbest move in NBA history. I understand at that time the Lakers weren't going to make the playoffs, and LeBron was getting older, 
but he still was the best player in the league. And the only reason why they didn't make the playoffs was because Braun got injured. Before he got injured, they was a top 5 seed in the West. After he got injured, they went 6-12. and 12. Mm. Should LeBron James well be? So when I look at the stats, the stats say yes, but I don't think so. It's another James that comes to mind. Oh. James Harden. I love James Harden. He's one of my favorite players, but he's not the best player in the NBA. He said this last season when he knew the Lakers weren't going to make the playoffs, but at that time, Braun was still the best. Braun proved this season he's clearly still the best in the league right now, though. Even though he didn't win the MVP, he had an amazing regular season averaging 25 points, 10 assists, and nearly 8 boards, shooting 49% from the field. Second in the NBA, spinning, LeBron, Reavers, he goes, L, B, J! Perimeter barrage going on, I think that's the 7th 3 of this quarter. No, he, he was even better in the postseason. He averaged 27 points, nearly 11 boards, and 9 assists, shooting 56% from the field, and 37% from three. It's from the beginning, will he penetrate or get in that post zone and pass out? He is the great equalizer here as LeBron James. Both hands up, letting the guy back you up. You gotta put the arm bar up. Then when it mattered the most, he played even better in the finals. Nearly 30 points, 11 boards, and eight and a half assists, shooting 59% from the field and 41% from three is ridiculous. Like, I don't think people understand how crazy that is. We're probably not gonna see another stat line like that in the finals for a long time. Drive, hop step, floats it up, bang shot is good. James in the post catches and gets hammered. But like I said, I guarantee, like I say again, it'll be the worst move the Lakers ever did in their life and they'll never win another championship. Guaranteed. I know LeVar Ball was mad his son Lonzo got traded, but he should have never said that. He didn't even say the Lakers aren't going to win next season. He said they would never win another championship. How do you say that about a franchise who at the time had 16 championships? As we all know, he was clearly wrong. Trading for Anthony Davis was one of the best decisions they could have made. In the regular season, AD averaged 26 points, 9 boards, 3 assists, 2 blocks, and 1 steal, shooting 50% from the field. And in the postseason, he averaged nearly 28 points, 9 boards, 3.5 assists, 1 block, and 1 steal, shooting 57% from the field, 38% from 3, and 83% from the line. It doesn't get much better than that in the league. Most players will never have a regular season and postseason run like that. Lonzo Ball did pretty good this year on the Pelicans, and Brandon Ingram played really well, but I don't know if the Lakers would have won it all if they was on the team this year.